night closed over Wembley and Chelsea and their shiny unbeaten record emerged from the tunnel before kickoff. The upper tier of the stadium that remained Spurs residence was a sea of empty bright red seats, darkened only by a smattering of home supporters. Tottenham fans have grown disillusioned with the interminable saga of their delayed move to their new palace at White Hart Lane but as their resentment simmered, their manager and their team soared above all the frustration as effortlessly and as gracefully as if they had wings. Tottenham have lost already to Manchester City and Liverpool at Wembley this season, and if the third of the clubs that sat above them on Saturday morning had come away with a victory, too, there would have been a sense that Spurs were on the verge of being cut adrift from the title race. Players like excuses as much as any of us and it would have been easy for the Spurs team to take refuge in the stadium fiasco and the sense of uncertainty into which it has plunged the club. It is to their credit that they have ignored it and forged on regardless. Instead, Mauricio Pochettino's team produced a performance of such beauty and irresistibility that by the time the match was over, it was they and not Chelsea who were being bracketed with City and Liverpool as this season's big three. Their 3 1 victory moved them above Chelsea into third and took them to within three points of Liverpool in second. Spurs were a blur of movement and Chelsea simply could not cope. By the time Spurs had finished with them, they had been so utterly outclassed that it was hard to see how they had remained unbeaten this long. Maybe because they hadn't come up against anybody playing as this Tottenham team played. So much for Chelsea's historic dominance over Spurs, two god that was scattered to the winds. All those years when Chelsea had an unblemished record over Tottenham counted for nothing. Any more performances like this and Spurs will be Chelsea's bogey team, not the other way round. At the moment, we are the best team in London, yes, a beaming Christian Eriksen said after the match. After today a lot of players would say a lot of happy things and we are in a happy place. It wasn't even Spurs' strongest side. Their entire first choice backline was missing. It didn't matter. The deputies distinguished themselves and the attacking players were unstoppable. Sun destroyed Chelsea with his pace. Eriksson destroyed Chelsea with his vision. Kane destroyed Chelsea with his ambition. Eriksson was so good it was a reminder to Spurs chairman Daniel Levy that he really ought to offer the Dane an improved contract. Eriksson, who has created more chances than any other midfielder since the start of last season, earns a relatively modest £70,000 a week but his deal expires at the end of next season. He is the brain of this team. Keeping him should be a priority. Chelsea had come into the match two games away from a club record undefeated run from the start of a top flight campaign but it was obvious from the opening exchanges that that record was not going to survive the evening. Their loss leaves City and Liverpool as the last two teams in the English leagues who have not yet tasted defeat this season. Chelsea were in disarray in the opening exchanges, giving the ball away at will, unable to cope with Tottenham's pressing without the ball and their movement with it. Inside the opening first five minutes, Kane rose to head an Aurier cross goalwards and even though it was comfortably saved, it felt as though it might be the beginning of a long evening for Riza Balaga. Spurs took the lead two minutes later. It wasn't a surprise. Derrickson, recalled to the side after injury, whipped in a delicious free kick from the right and Allen, who had scored five times in his last four games against Chelsea, darted ahead of Kavaki to glance his header past the goalkeeper. Chelsea looked bewildered. Two minutes after that, Spurs should have been further ahead. Eriksson was the provider again, lifting a return pass into the path of Sun who blasted it too high with only Ariza Balaga to beat. A minute after that, Sun sold Louise with a sweet turn and bore down on the overworked Spain international again. This time, Ariza Balaga blocked the shot with his legs. Dots. Eventually, Chelsea did force an opportunity. In fact, they were unlucky not to be awarded a penalty when Hazard tumbled in the area under a clumsy challenge from Foyth. 
Boy has got form in giving away spot kicks and this should have been another dot Martin Atkinson wave play on. It was breathless stuff and a few minutes after their reprieve, Spurs doubled their advantage. It was a strange goal. Kane took the ball with his back to goal 30 yards out and turned into space. He advanced a few yards and then hit an optimistic shot that whistled past David Luiz. It was struck hard but it was also relatively close to the center of the goal. It should have been a routine save but a rise of Alaga stood rooted to the spot and watched the ball as it rolled past him into the net. Maybe he was unsighted by Louise, who had acted as an unwitting screen. Maybe he did not expect Kane to shoot so early. Either way, it was an embarrassing goal to concede. Chelsea tried to regroup, but Spurs were still running amok. Chelsea's defense looked ragged and disorganized. Example 1 The way they kept allowing themselves to be outnumbered when Spurs took a short corner. It happened time and again. Each time, Ericsson curled dangerous crosses into the area unmolested. The ploy nearly led to a third goal after half an hour. Again, Ericsson was left with plenty of time to cross the ball to the near post, and Alderweireld met it with his right foot. Ariza Balaga parried it, but Ali hooked it back over him, and the Chelsea defense watched for an agonizing second as it looked as if it would loop into the net. It drifted just wide. Ericsson carved Chelsea open again on the stroke of half time, drifting to the byline and then cutting it back for Sun, who met it on the volley and was denied by a fine save from the rise of Balaga. The interval came as a blessed relief for Chelsea and their supporters. It was not much of a respite. Ten minutes into the second half, Spurs struck again. Sun might have had a hat trick already, but he made up for his earlier misses with a goal of quite stunning quality. Released early by Allen, he picked the ball up just inside the Chelsea half and left Jorginho in his way. He cut him from the right, advanced on goal, and slid the ball past to rise a Balaga with his left foot. 3 0. No. Game over. It should have been 4 midway through the half. Sun darted through the middle and fed Orier as he overlapped on the right. Orier slid the ball to Kane in front of goal, but the winner of the World Cup Golden Boot leaned back and lifted his shot too high from 6 yards out. Chelsea grabbed a consolation 5 minutes from the end when Giroud, who had replaced the hapless Murata, Rose unchallenged in the box to head home from Othpili Kleda's cross but by then Spurs were home free.